okay as we have explained uh, we are going to see the pulse amplitude modulated uh, waveform so this is the circuit which has to be rigged up in order to observe the waveform so the same circuit has been rigged up in the springboard where you can see uh, this is lf398 and uh, the pins used are one this is your pin 1 2 3 4 i hope you remember how to rig it up 5 6 7 8 okay for this we need to provide the power supply uh, to the respective pins which has been provided with plus 15 volt and minus 15 volt and uh, we have to provide an analog input to the pin number 3 okay pin number 3 so the analog input is provided to the pin number 3 this is pin number 3 where uh, it has been provided through the signal generator this is the signal generator which is having 539 hertz and you can see the selection mode is done as sine wave this is the sine which uh, selection is done okay now appropriate of amplitude is set here using this now okay and then we have to provide a square wave to pin number 8 this is the square wave which we have provided to the pin number 8 and you can see this is the square wave which has been set through the signal generator which has kept around uh, 5 kilohertz and you can see the mode selection is done for square so make sure that you will select sine and square using two uh, signal generators and uh, once their values are set and uh, provided to the circuit you can observe the output at pin number 5 this is the output where we need to uh, observe which is pin number 5 and the output is seen through the or observed using your cro and if you observe using cro the output the output Uh, of the pam looks like this see here? you can see here so output of the pam you need to observe where the pam if i stop the waveform you can see uh, you don't have a flat end you have a curved end and falling down to zero again you can observe the waveform this is how the uh, pulse sampling output the pam output should be obtained okay so what you can do is you can vary your uh, uh, frequency that is message frequency and try to observe how the output of the pam will be and accordingly you note down which can be uh, observed with respect to the sampling frequency or the nyquist criteria also so the, rig up this first circuit and uh, observe the waveform this completes your pam pulse sampling experiment the continuation of that is the flat top sampling so in order to see the flat top sampling you have to rig up this circuit now so again it make uses of lf3982 uh, ic's and the connections has to be done according to this uh, circuit which has been shown to you okay now the same connection has been set up using the springboard so you can see here uh, we have the two ic's you can see those two ic's now you know how to connect them and connect according to the pin details given to you and provide the necessary inputs that is for pin number 3 you need to provide a sign so i have uh, just cascaded from the previous uh, the same sign you can directly give it from the uh, signal generator so make use of this and provide the sign waveform you need to short 8 and 8 of both the ic's so that we have short and you need to provide a square wave which acts as a sampling frequency for you and uh, that has been given okay so what you have to do is you need to observe two things in this circuit you need to observe the output at the first stage of the op amp uh, first stage of the 398 that is pin number 5 first stage basically this acts as a sample and hold and do you observe that you are getting a sample and hold output at the first stage and at the second stage that is the next uh, fifth terminal you should have the output which is a flat top so i am going to show you the output at both the stages so at the first stage what we have is uh, the pin number 5 first ic pin number 5 is this so this is your first ic and the pin 5 of that is this according to us and uh, here i am just taking out the output and we are trying to observe it in the cro so if you observe it in the cro uh, so i have made use of a digital scope you can use the other scope also uh, analog scope no problem and if i stop this you can see the waveform see this should be your out, uh, waveform of the 
sample enrolled you can see during uh, the on you have the uh, curve and uh, during hold you have the flat lines you can see all those flat lines and uh, this is how the output of the sample and hold looks okay you can uh, vary the waveform uh, frequency and you can observe the waveform also now i am going to put the probe at second ic pin number 5 so you can see second ic pin number 5 is at the bottom for me this is the entire circuit what you have and just see you should get an output which is a flat top so this is how you get the tops of the sampled signal will be flat that is what you mean by flat top and if i stop it you can see the output this is what the output is this is the experiment which completes for the flat top sampling okay so you should do the observation one is how the output of the pam look like pulse sampling look like and how the output of the flat top looks like flat top has a uh, samples with the tops being flat you can see the samples of its top being they are being flat this is flat top whereas if you look at the uh, sampled output the pulse sampled output you can see their top uh, is not flat you can see that they are not flat see here you can see some curve which are not flat you can see those curves okay so this is the difference between pulse sampling and flat top sampling and flat top sampling is very much important for us to uh, just proceed in order to encode the data or you convert to the digital format so you can observe the output now just see here so what all the observations that you need to do is you need to note down what is your uh, sampling frequency or uh, the square wave frequency that you are providing you should note down what is your analog frequency or the sine wave input that you are providing as well you should note down what are the output levels that you are getting the amplitudes you need to note down at each stage once this sampled outputs are obtained you need to reconstruct the signal so in order to reconstruct the signal what we will do is what we will do is you have to make use of a rc circuit you have to make use of a rc circuit which is this so you design an rc circuit depending upon the sine frequency using f is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc and the same rc circuit you just connect to the output okay you connect to the output of the circuit and you have rc connected and uh, that should result in a sine wave form that is you should get a d mode output which is nothing but a sinusoidal wave form which will be almost like this okay you will have certain ripples because of the low frequency and uh, you should observe a sine wave which is almost uh, you here you need to observe only with respect to the frequency so make sure that the frequency of the input that you are providing and the frequency of the output that you are getting at the d mode they should be one in the same you can smoothen the waveform by varying the frequency or having the design to be little varied where you can design for r and c using the relation f is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc so what you have to do is you can simulate the same circuit using your simulation software for pam separately show the output Sim you have to simulate separately for the flat top and observe the output of the flat top you should show the output at both the stages at first stage of the pin number 5 and the second stage of the pin number 5 for the flat top and you can show the reconstructed output by building your rc filter where you need to show the output which is a sine wave okay that completes the experiment observation that you need to do is your uh, measured d mode output the rc filter output frequency and the frequency that you have given through the signal generator both the frequency should match they should be approximately near to each other okay if you do that and verify that completes the experiment okay so when you come back to the college you can rig up the same and you can just check with the Uh, CRO or observation of the output that you are going to obtain. Okay, if this completes your experiment, thank you.